can't take that risk. I'm going live like we won't take that trip. Like I woke up this thing like a witch. Oh, what's up guys? I just dropped these no one hoodies. Got some no one tees on the website too right now. Link is right here on the screen. You can type this in or you can click the first link in the top of the description. This whole TikTok meme trend is just so funny to me right now. So I originally made these hoodies as like a prop for the video, but everybody was like, yo, you gotta drop those. So if you guys wanna rock one, just, just go to the website right now. I would pause the video and go there right now because for the first 300 orders, I thought it'd be cool if I signed and put these unreleased Noah Boat 2014 fits in the first 300 orders. This is an unreleased pick back when I was in high school. So I'm signing about 300 of these and they're going to be in the orders you want to get yourself a signed noah goat 2014 fit go to the website right now we got hats hoodies tees let's get into the video what are we doing today i think we're reacting to your whole tiktok viral oh thing. oh yeah i'm like a meme now any reason for the wardrobe change oh yeah i thought you said we were going to talk about me and the guys so i just wanted to yeah, yeah i guess it's public so i don't know like how much i can say i've just never seen you in the, the ski mask before yeah i guess you didn't know me back then right you didn't really know what i was into Anyways, yeah, apparently I'm a meme now. Everybody has dug up my archive photos and posted them all over TikTok. To be honest, they're, they're hilarious. Everybody wants me to explain these photos. And there's not too much to say, but it's funny. The coolest thing about this to me was I didn't lift a damn finger. I just woke up one day and somebody's like, yo, did you see this TikTok about you? I'm like, ha ha, yeah, people make TikToks about us all the time. And then it was like, yo, you see this TikTok about you another 400 times for the next two days. And I was like, okay. I like to keep up all of my old Instagram photos from like when I first started Instagram. I know a lot of people most people private anything past 2019 at this point i'm one of those people and for me i was like well one obviously the stuff i wore as a kid versus now i think it's hilarious what i was even into back then so i like to just leave it up for the journey it's nice that i just have kept a good 20 old photos on my instagram and whoever was stalking my page or a supporter decided to just grab one of those and be like yo look at noah from 2024 to 2014 you've seen me wear a lot of these outfits uh -huh. at that time when we were 16 17 i even remember remember just getting a comment on one of our recent YouTube videos and it said, you guys are blown up on TikTok right now. Uh -huh. And I just thought nothing of it. Cause I was like, yeah, people make TikToks all the time. Like whatever. You told me, brother, making all these videos. Yes. And no. I was like, I started looking and then people started sending them to me and they're like, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> My favorite part about this is the fact that it's something positive. Like <laughs> most stuff that goes viral nowadays right. is slander or some crazy shit or drama. Or the this is just good, wholesome <laughs> virality completely authentic. This is just what life's all about. So I'm curious to know the backstory behind these pictures. It started with the, it's that Mr. Riss, who the fuck is Heather song? And everybody's using the same TikTok sound. And on TikTok, you can click the sound in the bottom corner. All the videos are just me. And I was like, holy shit. Even to the point where it was like, the owner of the song? Nah, Noah's the owner of the song. And then there's a guy that's talking about one of the most viral songs blown up on TikTok is this song. It's been popularized by Noah Boat called the Noah Boat theme song. This viral song, like I woke up this thing like a witch, became more popular because of this. We should have got him a so whoever picked that song and did that is genius and before we get started we actually just dropped these limited noah and them hoodies and tees these are the pictures that everybody has been using the most so uh they're on our website right now website's only gonna be up till they sell out so if you want to get one click the link in the description if you want to support this funny meme trend be it on the joke you can wear this and people be like what's that just be like oh that's noah and them y'all support noah like if y'all do anything support noah on this one man i never thought i'd be a meme so it's either you and a gang or you with some ladies so yeah whichever you prefer <clears throat> and so how the tiktok started was everybody was using 2024 noah versus 2014 15 16 noah but as like two weeks have gone by people have gotten creative to where they're just using my stiff poses and my faces with captions people have like evolved the trend from just new noah old noah to just taking my old photos and putting these funny captions so the internet is just hilarious first one up we got 2024 noah I'm going like I this thing like hey. a Can you please break down? This is the iconic image that really started it all. Correct. How did you end up in this situation? <laughs> Homie in the bottom right. I met him at a house party when I was a senior in high school, probably around like 2015. We were talking and he was like, yo, you shoot videos? I was like, yeah, yeah, I do. And he was like, yeah, I make music. I'm trying to shoot a music video this weekend. I said, cool. This photo specifically is probably like six months after our first interaction ever. So like at this point, I had already got to know them enough and we've hung out enough. 
Uh, I would say there was like a friendship. Uh, we just kind of had like this relationship where he'd be like, yo bro, hit me up, pull up. And I would pull up and sometimes he wouldn't shoot videos. I would just go there and I hung out with him a handful of times. And then I think this photo specifically was another music video shoot. Uh, the guy in the white shirt in the front is wearing a shirt of his friend that passed away. He was trying to make a video, trying to like memorialize him, almost like celebrate him in the song and shot that video. And then it was nice that night was over. And then his mom and aunt were like cooking some great food. So I like went inside and I was just feasting. I just remember sitting outside and he was like, bro, we gotta flick up real quick. I was like, hell yeah. And then we just took that photo and, and I remember I found a text on my phone and it was like, yo bro, I want you to be official with us. And I read that and I was like, hell yeah, bro. It would be an honor. And he was like, pull up, I'll give you the, the go ahead. And I came there and then I didn't know what I just got myself into, but uh. Oh my God. I brought you there one time. I remember going once. Those yeah. don't know that Ryan was there. I brought you there one time when uh, he was shooting a music video with this other DMV rapper. And um, I made you like hold the speaker the whole time. But I uh, remember being there. All right, this one says, how I feel after calling bro, little bro. I'm one year older. To take that risk. I'm going live like we both take that trip. Like I woke up this thing like a witch. We should have got him a lift. Here's another one. Do you like waffles? Yeah, we like waffles. Do you like pancakes? Yeah, we like I also want to read the comments on some of these. Like this one says, no boat is faded. That's no boat in them. That was just my like go-to pose. One hand in the pocket. One hand in the pocket. You gotta show the watch off. Crooks and Castles was like a huge brand back then. We're gonna watch this one. This is a guy from the UK that wanted to break down everybody talking about my photos. When you see this picture, you might just think this is an innocent little child, but this kid Noah boat became the goat. You see how we all have that one white friend that should have been black? Like, we literally treat him as one of us. He is the definition of that. I keep seeing these pictures of him all over TikTok, and then I thought to myself, he might as well call himself Oreo, bro, because there's always two black guys on the side and him in the middle. And I can't lie, it's not even just the man them giving him respect. The girls love this man, bro. Like, look at her smile. She's grinning bare teeth because she's happy to be with a goat. Messi's not the goat, it's Noah Boat. So after seeing all of the love he's put into the black community and all of the hard work and determination to be a part of it, me, a black man, has decided to give Noah Boat this pass, the M-word pass. So Noah, message me on TikTok, you get this pass, and you can say the M-word anywhere in the world. Oh, this on Valley. Oh, perfect. Noah goes, and the word of the day is... The word of the day is... The deeper thing here, how did you end up around all of these black people? The high school that I went to just happened to be predominantly black people. The lifestyle and the clothes and everything just almost rubbed off on us. Ooh. And I think at that time, basketball shoes were a lifestyle. The certain brands for clothes were a lifestyle at my school specifically. And when you're in high school, I feel like you really are just trying to be a copy and paste of your peers, whether you're in the sneakerhead culture or the goth group, the football group. Like I was definitely into the sneaker culture and with that came dressing myself a certain way because I was just influenced by not only my peers but then all the music that was coming out at that 2012 to 2015 time. Mine was predominantly white mm -hmm. but even with that there was no like it wasn't a preppy school so it wasn't yeah. like vineyard vines and boat shoes. Was there like any commonality with like style or anything or everybody was just kind of like it was rednecks <laughs> sports people the brainiacs it, it was kind of a mixed bag. I was in ninth grade grade and uh there was this guy named tanner i remember he was just he was wearing these lebron nine hornets they were just these purple and turquoise two shoes i remember those and i just remember sitting in class and like those look freaking dope those are so cool and i i walked over after class i was like hey man what are those shoes called where'd you get them he's like they're called this and i got them at Foot Locker. i was like dope so then i walked to Foot Locker, and when i got there i was like hey i'm looking for these shoes they're like oh yeah you had to be here last weekend at 7 a.m to get them i was like what are you talking about they're just shoes they're like oh no no yeah, yeah the, the purple ones the these purple ones. ones these ones they're like oh no they're sold out check the bag how can they be sold out they're just shoes they're you have all these shoes on the shelves, go grab them. And then I was like, there is shoes that come out that sell out right away. And if you were a part of that, you now have this exclusive shoe that you can either resell or wear. Yeah, I think with music and a lot of famous people at the time, and then obviously the culture itself in our area, the DMV, like the shoes were like a very, very big deal. So I started looking up the dates of releases for shoes and I'm like, oh shit, I gotta get here early to get this, this, this. And um, I 
tons of free time on my hands, so I fell in love with just the shoes itself. I knew everything about this shoe, the history of the shoe. I was very influenced by just seeing that at school, and then I understood how to resell them very well on eBay, and I was constantly able to buy as many shoes as I wanted. I think it was after my second Christmas, I think my parents had officially bought me three shoes from Foot Locker that were like 150 each, and they were like, we're not buying you any more shoes. Like, th th these are a lot of money. And I'm like, what do you mean? You're my parents. You guys have your mom made of money. More, please. Like, you made of money. Mom, that's your name. So I just understood the sneaker culture and then I, I, I just learned more and I was able to just sell it and I was able to keep my hobby up for my entire high school career from freshman year. What I'm gathering from what you're saying is almost like you saw the shoes, you saw the fashion, whatever. Well, it was specifically the shoes. The shoes, yeah. The shoes to. started me first, yeah. And I think at this time, sneaker culture was at its height. Literally its peak. People were like dying over them. People were going that. I brought Ryan to like one or two of those. Like I was really in these lines like multiple weekends with 300, 400 people plus like hours on end just to get a shoe. So you were working to get these shoes and yep. like going to the releases and stuff. And then when you, when the other kids at your school saw, oh shit, Noah has the XYZs. Yep. It was almost a rite of passage. Yeah. Cause yeah. back then, back then that was like the, especially in high school. Yeah. That's how you get brownie points. Yeah. Yeah. There were obviously other white people, other white yeah. guys yep. in your school that I'm assuming did the same thing. Yeah. There was a, it was like a, it was split. I think it was because I figured out how to make a good amount of money, like with the shoes that I was able to get more than any other white kid. Mm. I remember a lot of people in my class were like, what are your parents like spies? They must buy you all these. And that, that was something that always bugged me. A lot of the kids just thought my parents bought me every shoe. Mm. Besides a Christmas or my birthday, my parents wouldn't just buy me a shoe on a random weekend. Unless it like was my birthday or Christmas, I couldn't get that. There's still a calendar in my bedroom. I had so much OCD that I made sure I wrote down every shoe I wore every day of the school year. And I made sure not to repeat it in that week. Like oh, that's wow. how crazy it got. I made sure whatever shirt and shoe that I wore that day, I wouldn't repeat it that weekend. By the end of the week, I would just, I would sell those shoes. So like if I wore a shoe on Monday, I put it on eBay for seven days. Then by next Monday, it would already sold. And I did that with like every shoe every day of the week. So I always was able like every two weeks just have a new pair of shoes and kept up with all the releases. One of my favorite quotes is people have a sixth sense for authenticity. And I think what I'm gathering from this is you were wearing the shoes because you had an appreciation for the fashion, for the yep. aesthetics of the shoe. And you didn't try to like, hey, I'm with a bunch of black people. I want to be like y'all. It was more, it was just authentic. You just yeah, authentically fact. thought it was cool. Fact. You weren't trying to be someone you weren't. It was merely, you were assimilating to the yep. environment you were in, in an authentic way. And exactly. In a, and not in a culture vulture. I'm just trying to be this. It also just speaks to your, your personality or your character in general. You can't buy swag. You fact. can't fact. buy being cool. Sorry, you, like a lame motherfucker. And, and no boat can buy the same <laughs> pair of shoes. It's gonna look different on two different yep. people. Sorry. And I wanna see some of these other pictures. Yeah, yeah, so um, this is a photo with me and these two girls. The iconic one, man, y'all gotta get this. You gotta get the shirt. You gotta get the shirt. That's the <laughs> iconic image, man. The, I saw the TikToks going viral, and in my head I was like, oh, I have another funny photo that nobody's gonna believe. And I have this photo of me sitting with uh, these two ladies taking selfies. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> How old were you in this? 17. Ryan pulled up. I pulled up, I had to pull up. Ryan was at Dysfunction. So that makes you you gotta get you gotta function? get the shirt. Ryan was you probably took that. I don't even know who took that photo. Oh my god, I was at that function. What the fuck? There's Ryan right there. I don't know why I took a selfie. See, this is how I knew I was meant to do YouTube. I was photographing everything back then. But um, yeah, this is the other funny part of the photo was there was oh this god. big a whole group of people, and I think we were literally playing spin the bottle. I remember. You can that. see the bottle. Uh, if you guys zoom in on, you can see Ryan is actually in the black bucket hat next to me. Looking back at the photo, I am the only white person here, and I'm not going to, but I could literally list everybody's name here because. These are everybody in my 2015 high school class. Going back to uh, me and the two ladies, people are trying to figure out like, what is, like, how did this happen? Long story short, the girl on my left, I was talking to her at the time, and this was her 18th birthday party, and the girl to the next to me is her best friend. Ooh. And we went to school for four years, we were already seniors, so we had already had like little crushes on each other throughout the year, and we were just kind of more in our little like, I don't know, probably like a two week, three week fling. I couldn't even say it was a relationship. We just liked each other, whatever, and um, yeah, it was her birthday party, and I remember, I, I have another photo, I, I probably can't dig it up right now, but um, she asked me to bring the balloons to her birthday because she wanted me to help her out with this, so I remember I went to Party City and I got like golden balloons and I, I literally brought balloons to her birthday party. We had a good time. That's 
why she's more dressed up than the others. I Someone just, you don't know who snapped that? Probably her other friends. I don't know where I was at this time. Yeah. I must have been somewhere else. Ryan was turning up. <laughs> Has she messaged you? She was like, Elmio, this is the last thing I expected to see wow. today. Yeah, here's another photo. Nobody's seen this one. <laughs> the expression. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I look back and I have these faces that are just hilarious. One, how do you feel about me wearing my black Tims on her carpet? She's also wearing shoes too. What's wrong with Tims on carpet? Unless they're Perfect. dirty. Yeah, that's true. I don't know if they were, they probably weren't. No, they're probably me, clean. no they're, me, I probably sold them the next day. They're probably on ice. You just brought them out for that event. Yeah, no, and the oh. classic G Star Raw hoodie. It is wild that you could pull that off the Tims. <laughs> that's <laughs> crazy. You know, like it's not easy to pull off Tims. And I'm wearing cuff pants that are also making my legs look skinnier and the shoes are big. That is incredible. I had my fossil watch. I got that at one of the outlets. She said, I was like, you, you know, see you it. I remember that being like a new hoodie too. So I probably felt good. Look at this photo of me. There's a photo of me in the bathroom. Get a little self, a little, little mirror pic. Some light. So these are the pics that if you've seen a TikTok, you ain't seen these ones. You see me, Ryan, in the gang. Uh, my friend Zach that's standing to the left of Ryan, he was really wearing the same G-Star Raw and I told him to keep his jacket on because I was pissed. Like, like, this is a dope hoodie. You can wear that hoodie, but I didn't like it when me and other people would wear stuff the same. Like, yo, 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 bro, brother, cover, cover that up, bro. <laughs> that, that's just a funny photo. And um, so I Iconic. Just there's just little old me sitting there. I don't think I kissed anybody tonight. I remember I kissed one girl. <laughs> oh shit! I don't even I, remember. That. I'll be honest. I remember. I, oh, I I did you spin it? I must have. I vividly remember <laughs> making out with a girl. Oh, I must have been in the car gone. First black girl that I had ever kissed. This era is so timeless because no. Nope, look at we were actually playing spin the bottle. <laughs> Nobody was on their phone. Literally, you see one person sitting on their phone right now. Not one person. We're all in the moment. Oh, everybody's ha everybody's Damn. look those people are about to kiss right there so here's some more TikToks we can go through what's calm but it's time to get hype in this bitch how the fuck you go step with no pipe on your hill nigga take some my fuck talk about we go hit this the chest it's like the photo say you just do it i'm up like i'm lighting the split i'm luke how i'm testing my mic with the hit oh put the ass boy nigga claim me a dog he ain't biting that nothing he just barking and shit and it's funny because it's like who is this white guy <laughs> The white guy in the Hollister shirt said, I could walk through the hood untouched. So it's his, I mean, it's his word. And you know, he said it. He's obviously the voice of reason. He's the voice of the hood. 2023, Noah. <laughs> With the iconic picture of me with the girls. What are the comments saying? Here we go. That's no boat in them. But yeah, at first I was like, everybody keeps saying that's no boat in them. And there's a screenshot where somebody was like, what does that mean? That's no one to guys. That's no one to gang. And I'm like, all right, there's no one in them. And it's like, somebody chose this song. Somebody chose my photos and it went viral. And then people just chose a phrase and ran with it. I just like wake up to this and I'm like, that's crazy. What is happening? No boat old pics. No, that's a crazy flick. So exchange? I got the Armani exchange. It's like a zipper polo, like halfway right here with the Armani text. I got the H&M cargos, but I, I pin rolled them. It wasn't even called cuff. Like you folded it. Free game, y'all. Fold it and then you bring it around and then you tuck it in. It was like a different type of show to people. That. That's the pin roll. I probably did a little bad. And then I got the Jordan 2s on. I'm holding this stack of 20s in my hand. This is a clean fit though. Photo number two. Damn, I wish I had the full frame of this pic and I wish I had the unedited version. But isn't that funny? All the old photos, we would just deep fry them. I maxed that filter out. Banger. But it wasn't just it. And that's it. And this was it. Not gonna lie, I like this fit. I don't know. It was me with the, the Helly Hansen jacket. What's funny is that's a huge brand in our, uh, in the DMV, but like nobody skis or snowboards. And I asked that with a whole bunch of my other friends. I'm like, bro, we were wearing jumpsuits to school, but none of us have ever even been to a ski slope, to a ski <laughs> slope ever. So it was funny. Like my first time ever two weeks ago, I went to Utah and I actually wore my Helly Hansen gear, snowsuit and jacket on the ski slopes. Um, and when I got there, I'm learning new things. Apparently the people that actually wear Helly Hansen's are really good. So like I was getting like little respect from like other like people I walked by. They were like, like, oh, what's up? What's, oh, you're doing that? Like, I would get these little like head knots because I had all the Helly Hansen. I'm like, brother, I haven't just found it. Even. And then, yeah, these Jeremy Scotts, I don't think anybody at my school actually wore these. And I don't even remember how I found these, but you also owned a Ooh. pair. It's funny because back at the time, I vividly remember those were like $120. I looked up my size now. They're like a thousand plus. I was like, wow. I was like, see, not that being a sneakerhead was, there's benefits to be like, damn, I could have. Those things had some value because that Jeremy Scott era of these teddy bear, camo bear, monkey shoes, like they they don't make those anymore. So if I would have kept on to all these, damn, I, I probably would have never sold those too. I probably would have kept them in my room, but I kind of still want to get those just to have. It was crazy how I walked to school. Like this is the easily the easiest way to roast somebody. Like what are you wearing, yes. brother? You have flat, colorful, bright flowers with a neon green highlighter shoe and a teddy bear with little arms. I remember like people were like, bro, you gotta wear those more. Like nobody ever, even my one teacher, she was like, oh, I love when you wear those. Like it was honestly hilarious. And uh, I don't know, you wore them at your school, I, I, wore, I was very much class clown type of person. So it was like, oh, it just kind of fit. It was like, so 
though it was more like a, oh my God, what are those? Yeah, yeah. I think, and this might be speaking just to a, a larger point of like, you gotta rock it. Like, Thanks. you gotta own it. Yeah, exactly. I put on my Ellie Hansen with my, my khaki cargos and I was like, I'm wearing the flower powers today. They're so ridiculous that they're cool. The same way like Blueface having the Benjamin Franklin on, tatted on his face. It's so ridiculous that it's cool. I also just like this photo because it's the classic classroom uh, flick and I'm not the only one, but people, but I look back and I'm like, I can't judge myself too hard because like, bro, I'm 15, 16 years old. So it's like, bro, wear whatever you want. You're a kid. I'm like, it's still kind of hard to me. I just always like to take these message, like these uh, le life lessons from it. If you're brave enough to be like someone who's unique mm -hmm. and if you're brave enough to go against the mainstream and be different, a lot of times you get rewarded for being super unique. Very true. I'm telling you like nobody at my school, nobody else wore these animal shoes. And because of that, I ended up owning poodles, these gorillas and these cheetah ones that literally had a tail on them. But yeah, I got the KD5 arm pearls. Damn, those are so fire. Another type of cargo pants, probably pin rolled them too. And then seems like a striped polo, pink and white tee. You definitely did not take as nearly as many pictures. Nah. Okay, yeah. Nah. That was definitely a me thing. Bro, I, mean, I can't believe I have all these. The this subtleties is... in the yellow. And then we got to have the yellow with the- Me wearing the asteroid foams with these ETO jean cuff pants and yellow polo. Hilarious. Ah, the iconic. The combo. <laughs> the combo. <laughs> I got not just a short sleeve yellow polo, I got the long sleeve with the Thunder 14s. The pockets on the pants, like that was like a new thing. Just people like adding extra elements to jeans um, was starting to be a new thing outside of just wearing regular jeans. So I was really interested in seeing things outside of cargos where people would put these like custom pants together. So Ooh. I would go on eBay and I would find them. I would just type in like patched jeans and I would find stuff because I couldn't even find them in stores. That's legendary. This photo, the mirror pick, you had to be there. I'm sure you did a mirror pick at one point. I 100% did like, a mirror Like it, it was, I would do two of the same pick next to each other. Like it wouldn't be a mirror, it would just be picture, picture, same picture. And I have a screenshot on my phone. I won't pop it up because I want to show the guy's name. But I remember I did a mirror pick and he was like, bro, what app is that? I was like, Pixar. He was like, you the goat, bro. And I remember he like the next day, all his pics started being mirror pics. And like people wanted to do the mirror pick. And yeah, my poses, I couldn't even tell you the classic hand over hand. Look to the side. Yeah, that was a little. I, that might be my favorite one. That was Sweden. Yeah, the Sweden. Sweden polo is fucking tough. And I suck because I went to the polo store recently. They don't really sell them like that anymore. And I have these ones that have like the whole stripe with them. And uh, I don't know. At that time, with the the, the yellow on the shoulders. Uh, not only did this song that got used with my photos just make people laugh and happy and start a whole wave. Those people saw it too, and they also reached out to me. And were like, hell yeah, bro, we should do something. I see you going viral. This is funny. So man, if y'all did a the music video. Yeah, because I was like, bro. Put me in the Heather music video, like refilm it and say feature Nobo. And I, I pitched him the idea. He was down. We just gotta just gotta make it happen. If I could be next to Kyle when he's missed to take that risk, like, yo, I'm telling you, you're with the guy. This is the guy here. Same way Jack Harlow had a music video, but then three months later he had the baby Lil Wayne uh, on it. Like that video can still get tons of views later, so that might be in the works. Even if this thing dies out, we ever filmed that music video and I got clipped, it would just resurface again. Yeah. It would be like, look, they linked up. That window was still open. I would say for the rest of this year. Hopefully that happens. We'll do one more TikTok where somebody just has like a fit me now versus then. This is a 2024 Noah fit wearing some unreleased strawberry park merch. Got these Travis Scott Air Force Ones on, some black Levi pants. And then we got my fit then. Russia. <laughs> I've got the Russia polo on with the the KD, KDs on my feet. And uh, my boy got the Dorenbecker 10s and he had leather pants on. And uh, this photo right here is just so cool to me. Clean fit Like too. a clean fit. And uh, I remember me and him were texting the day before. It was always like a thing where a lot of my friends at school would be like, yo, we gotta flick it up this week. We would just Ooh. we would just text each other that or you'd comment on our photo like, bro, meet me in the hallways at lunch, we're gonna flick up. Like flicking up with our peers, I guess, because my school specifically was into the fashion, people were like, let's get a picture together because you're wearing something cool, I'm wearing something Ooh. cool. So this was our first day of senior year, 2014 going into 2015. And we just got our senior year folders. If you zoom <laughs> in on my boy, you can see that there's a big red text and it says senior and grades nine to 11 just get this white and red up folder and the seniors get all black and red. So. Wow. And he was wearing a clean fit too. Like I couldn't pull that off. He had a loud uh, Jordan shirt on. Yeah, we just flicked that up. And I don't know, I think it's just dope that I, I have all these photos still saved and still got some unreleased stuff. So we'll probably make another video next about me breaking down some of my iconic throwback fits. The way you're casually looking at the black senior <laughs> folder. I'm reading the senior and, and like, yeah, oh my God. See, I'm an artist. So like, I just, when I see 
art in front of me, oh, I just have to call it out. You're not even flashing the folder like fully. You're looking at it on some, oh, you just caught me looking at it. It's like a perfect off guard. This was ahead of its time. Instagram back then, when you, I could say you specifically, but people in general, when they posted a picture, it was a moment. <laughs> Every time you posted a picture, it was a big deal. Yeah, cause like you get to go home to school and you get to see somebody post something, you're like, damn, he goes to my school, I'm gonna see him the next day. It was cool to keep up with people outside of the school day. And you knew all your followers yep. were gonna see that Correct. photo. And it's art, that's all it is, it's like, it's. These might have to get framed in the house one for day. For real, it's iconic. Everybody wanted me to address this stuff. Trust me, I've seen it, I couldn't not see it. My sister there was a teacher was texting me. You guys hit me up. The comments are telling telling me every all my DMs and a very funny moment for me. I was really wearing this stuff nonstop. So to see it be resurfaced, that is a funny ass thing. How do you feel right now? Are people coming up to you in public saying this? Yeah, I think the, the YouTube fame versus TikTok fame is crazy. Obviously, when we were blowing up on YouTube, anywhere you and me went, like it was like nonstop Ooh. people coming up. I think put our footprint in the sand as like YouTubers. It, it kind of leveled out to where it's like, yeah, when I go out, people kind of know us. Or if you know, you know, people have grown up. So Stop watching us. They're like, yo, bro, you, you've been my childhood. I love you, respect you. You and Ryan are so funny. And then this thing happened. The past two weeks, it was too much attention. And I'm not wow. trying to, I'm not no Taylor Swift, but I went to the mall and I was like, oh shoot, I need to get an extra one of these hoodies made real quick so I can use it for the for the video. As soon as I walked through the food court, like 20 kids followed me and then they stopped me and every kid that's talking to me, I know they've seen, they've probably seen YouTube videos, but it was very much, yo bro, you're all over my TikTok for you page. You own that Kyle Rich song. Yo, you're Mr. Take That Risk. I went on a ski trip two weeks ago, coming back from Utah to LA and I'm walking the airport and the entire UCLA volleyball team like, hey, there's Noble in them. What the fuck? And then I'm, I'm sitting on the plane in the back and then it's like a whole group of teenager boys are like on the left side behind me. And I know they know it's me and they're just looking at me and I feel great that I didn't have to lift a finger and people are just talking about me. It's just super cool. But, uh, uh, and obviously it's all good stuff. I'm not like stressed like, oh shit, they have that thing on me. I can't believe I posted that or I tweeted that. Like, I think the, the TikTok attention is way more than I've ever experienced recently. Obviously there's waves, so it'll come and go. But uh, what's beautiful about that is I did take a risk. You and me took a risk. I took a risk long ago and it paid off. Wow, taking the, making YouTube YouTube videos and putting yourself out there is taking a risk. You don't need a clothing brand from scratch. And that song is called Heather and my mom's name is Heather. The one that blew up. Are you kidding me? I think that's the moral of the story. Take that risk. Take that risk. I'm about to go take a risk right now. I don't know what it is gonna, what that's gonna be. But the first risk you should take is go cop the Noah boat and them two hoodies and two tees. Come on, man. Come on, man, this is too funny. And just to add on top of everything, I am going to be printing out some of my iconic old 2014 fits and I will be signing a couple hundred of them. So for the first couple hundred orders that buy from our drop today, I'm gonna put those in the orders and you'll get a signed Noah Bo 2014 fit pick. So I think it's kind of cool if you want to have that piece with you. That's insane. That's I mean, it. I'm officially a meme.